let's see. Hey, I'm I'm uh, live. I actually need to put. Oh yeah, so we got a, a question: Is improvisation truly improvisation, or just practice uh, routines used with various musical forms? I notice musicians to play identically to what they practice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. I saw it was a video I saw. It was a notable jazz musician too, older. I can't remember who it was. Name, but I think I saw them and they was they was talking along the same lines. It's like. Basically, you're playing um, the stuff that you know how to play, but um, you're you're arranging it differently or something like that. It was kind of like, you know, you can only play what you practice, and it's it's all it's it's a matter of uh, you know your philosophy and like um, what your goal is because uh, you have different types of jazz or subgenres, you know you got people who um you know are into bebop you got people who are into uh more free free jazz you got modal jazz you know what i'm saying so every genre has a different philosophy somewhat you know or 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 or, or um what's the word i'm trying to think about in, intent you know so like in free jazz it's like you're purposely trying to play something different and and um just sp spontaneous you know uh in the moment more playing around with sounds um and even like you think about avant-garde where you 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 just hear noise or random stuff you know keys dropping on the floor and honking on the horn and like just blah, 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 you know just playing whatever or you know you got more smooth jazz where it is exactly programmed where you're not improvising improvising as much as as all at all but you're just um uh, you know, playing the melody and, and just trying to be vocal. So every genre, every style has its own particular idiosyncrasies, you know. Um, let's see. Let me see if I got this on. I wanted to work on something, y'all. I just thought about it when I came on here. Some Some of these that I do, are kind of spontaneous. What's up? Let me know where you, who you are, and and where you are. And uh, oh, that's right, that's right. Y'all are hip. Y'all know Gary Bartz. Yeah, that's right. I think it was Gary Bartz. I think it might have been somebody else, but yeah, y'all hip. Y'all already know. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I it's it's the arrangement of changes um really exposes you that's why one of the things that i wanted to go over tonight that i thought about was putting stuff in different keys and i believe I, well last week i did a um a session where i was playing this 251 lick in different keys i think that was the last yeah that was the last in the shed session i did i did that uh in different keys and so, oh, what up, Benjamin? How you doing, bro? From Phoenix, Arizona. Appreciate that for letting us know. But yeah, um, you know, you kind of limit yourself if you don't have any vocabulary in other keys and, and other um, changes that you're not used to playing in uh, as frequent, you know. Good, good to hear, bro. Yeah, I mean, but you can only play what you know. I mean, I've hear I hear certain guys like I like um Joshua Redman who um I mean, he he seems so free uh when he plays. 
He can. He sounds like he can just play whatever he wants to play. And uh, his style and and like I learned a lot of him coming up. Um, you know, and but I didn't come from the same school of 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 thought, you know, to a certain degree, because something he understands and something he practiced, uh, or a teacher that he had, his dad, of course, was Dewey Red, man. He was like around here in um Fort Worth, Dallas area. Um and so but that was encouraging to find out, you know. But Joshua, he he went to the West Coast or actually to no, he was over there in Boston. And so what they got over there, um, I forget who their teacher was, but it's it's something that they got to where the way that they approach car changes, it was always like forward moving, like melodic. I remember when I asked him uh years back when I was in high school and I saw him, I asked him like, how do you what scales do you use? to play over chord changes or something like that. And so he said, it's not so much about scales, but it's about hearing melodies. And so I think that right there will really free you up because when you can create melodies over changes um, and basically play whatever you're hearing, um, then it's like, you know, it's, it's one of those things like telling a story or somebody giving you a topic and having you to freestyle on it, uh, where it's a new topic that you probably haven't thought about in a while, or you, you might have not thought about at all. But in the moment, you can start making some connections between that topic and what you've experienced and what you know about and start pulling principles from what you know to go along with that topic. And then before you know it, you're creating something spontaneous that you would have you haven't made those connections like that but because somebody sprung it on you then it's like okay you're making those connections and you create music you know or you're you're saying something really hip just because of um of who you are and your 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 vantage point you know so that's how it is with improvisation um you know you you have even something like you know giant steps you know it's only so much you can do over a tune like that cuz the changes are moving and the the way that they're moving um it seems to not give you much options but uh you know i've heard people play on giant steps and make it sound real lyrical mo- real melodic so it's just it's just a matter of pers- perspective you know but when it's all said and done, you you just have to be able to uh you gotta have stuff under your fingers first, uh, to be able to exp- expound on uh the changes. What's going on? We got uh so giant steps. <laughs> Yeah, so improvising and some a lot of times some of the stuff that I practice I don't even get to use. So that's another thing. You can practice all of this stuff and then not actually use it. 
<laughs> so it's it's kind of crazy how it works. It'll just come out. You got to think about it, though. That's the thing. You, you really got to think about fitting the stuff that you practice into a song. And you got to practice it, practice the song. You can practice the actual licks, but then you got to practice the song or playing the licks over the song. So that's another thing. And that's, that's, I have a three-step process that I talk about, you know, for, for those people who are the members. I talked about this um, last, last week or last couple weeks. You know, you got trans, uh, well, uh, transcribe, which is learn, whatever it is. Mostly I'm talking about by ear. You, you um, transcribe, then you transpose it in different keys. And then you uh, you apply it to a song, so that's my that's my three step process. So so whatever you do, you got to take it through those three steps. All right, obrigada. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we have uh, uh, on alto. I'm playing a Meyer number seven. And then I got um, Vent, what's this? I think I got a Diodario read. And then I have uh, my Super Stack ligature. Um, and uh, this is a uh, Okra's, Okra's horn. All right. Do you think transcription is crucial? Definitely it is. Otherwise, you won't have no vocabulary. It's kind of like the equivalent of reading books or listening to books. Like, you know, we always got to be learning and get out of our head because <laughs> you want other other perspectives just so that you can learn um, how other people are thinking. You know, get more perspective. It, it'll, it'll enhance yours. So, you know, that's true of, of reading and it's true also of, uh, you know, expanding your vocabulary on your instrument. So it's very crucial. Now, how much do I transcribe now? <laughs> I don't transcribe that much now just because my uh, schedule and my, my time, I'm focusing on a lot of other stuff. Uh but then, all right, uh, developing your own vocabulary. Really, you just need to transcribe. Transcribe and take from what you transcribe. Uh, when I say take from it, like start taking your the ideas you learn from somebody else's stuff and make it your own, tweak some stuff here and there. So if you learned a lick that's minor, then try to uh, transfer it to major or, or vice versa. If you learn something that was major, then make it minor. And, um, you know, that's you just got to learn from all of the uh, information and material that's there, you know, through through the people who are great at improvising. And um, you learn their stuff, and then out of that, your own uh, language uh, or dialect or style will kind of come from it. I'm from Nigeria, Mr. Phil French introduced. Okay. Yeah, your lessons are a blessing to me. Thanks. Oh, no problem. No problem. You're welcome. Hey, Mr. Fowler. What's going on, uh, Christopher? Is that right? Uh, Christoph. Christoph. Okay, Christoph. Uh, I have a question from a beginner. Okay. Um, I know you are the jazz style musician and you love and good at improvisation over chord changes for a beginner two years okay is uh lead bass melody okay so over chord changes did i miss something a good at improvisation over chord changes 
for a beginner? I didn't get the question. So you got to re re ask it. Okay. Is lead uh, melody line more important to learn first? Uh, then after this, uh, down the road or on code or chord changes and improv. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. So yeah, learn the melody first. Because first is your sound, your tone sound. You want to develop that first, get a good, really, really nice, good sound and be able to play melodies because that's what's going to be most important, stating melodies and playing it to make them sound good. And then the next thing you can do is learn the chord changes. And it's really good to learn piano too. If you don't pay, play piano, learn piano so you can voice those chords. You want to be able to play the chords to your to the songs so you'll just get a better um, grasp of the song and uh, the colors and your different degrees that you have access to to play over, you know. That's very important. All right. Sorry, y'all. Um, sniffing and stuff. But, but yeah, that'll be really good. Devin Jackson, what about getting scales and arpeggios to work together in a line? Oh, yeah, I cover that all the time. Oh, <laughs> Sergio. <laughs> He put, yeah, you put that you don't speak English. So I guess you translated it. I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> so I know you can understand, I guess, the playing more so the actual English language of me speaking. That's funny. Okay. Uh, so Devin, he said, what about getting scales and arpeggios to work? So I talk about that all the time. Because I talk about the linear lines, I talk about arpeggios and uh, enclosures and um, chromaticism and bebop scales, how you can put that in your improvisation. Um, so if you take like a, a, a C major, so if you take a line like that, you got... So right there, that's that's like a B. Uh, well, let's let's call it. I call this a linear line because I'm moving stepwise. That's that's a scale. It's a Lydian scale. But then when I get here, I'm actually doing a um, an enclosure on the five. Here's the five. That's the five. That's G. So I'm going, you know, one, two, three, four. That's a four note enclosure. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, a five note enclosure. If I include um, one, uh, that, that note, the, what is that? The four. One, two, three, four. If I go, I'm really thinking a four note enclosure, you know, so I'm not counting my fourth note in this walk up an enclosure. I'm just saying that that's a scale and I'll attach the enclosure to the fifth. So a lot of this terminology you get, you know, if you are part of the academy, because a lot of my academy members know about uh, linear lines, arpeggios, enclosures, chromaticism, and uh, how you can use that to a, a chord. All right. Or not, yeah, to plan over chords. So if I look at. So right there, I played another linear line. Bo -bo -do -bop, that's one, two, three, five line. So. And right there. Ba, 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 that's like it's an arpeggio but I'm playing the major 7 at the bottom so that's an arpeggio so you got enclosures in there 
you got an enclosure in there, you got a linear line in there, and you also got arpeggios. So you can apply the same concept over minor chords or whatever too. Uh, so like that, that's a C minor, but I'm coming down seven, five, three, one. But before I play seven, five, three, one, I played an enclosure. That's an enclosure on the flat seven. So that's an arpeggio. Enclosure to an arpeggio. Then I'm going to do it a linear line. Let's just go down like that. So that's the scale. Let's do that. That's one, two, three, five, seven. And basically, I'm starting to one, three, five, seven on the third degree. So a lot of this stuff, you might think like, wow, you know, how can, how, how you just go through it like that? And, you know, it's it's just, um, how do I go through it like that? <laughs> it's just, I guess, it's, it's once you break it down, like a lot of the stuff I teach in my lessons, if you're taking some private lessons with me, I go over how you can apply these things. But first, you got to know all your skills. You got to know your modes. You got to know uh, your arpeggios through the modes. So you got to start with. That's too high. But anyway, you got to go through stuff like that and play. So you got to go through things like that, the arpeggios, the scales through the modes, the arpeggios through the modes. And then when you look at a card in particular, look at the different degrees from the first degree, third degree, fifth degree, and the seventh degree. So so that's one, three, five, seven. So that's one, three. Still in the same mode, but I'm just starting on the third degree. Fifth degree. All right. Six, no, seventh degree. All right. Now, each degree is a certain um, chord quality. All right. So I can play over a G major seven, I'm sorry, a C major seven chord. And I have these different degrees at my disposal. I didn't think about turning this on, so it probably. Oh, it's. it's Sure. Oh no, I don't know. I'm showing a signal, but what? Do I not have anything in here? I don't. Know. Oh, let me just take it out. I had it running through the speaker, so you won't be able to hear it good. have a field day on playing over one chord once you know all your modes all right but yeah that's that's the i mean that's an easy that's an easy one but the application of it you you just have to take the arpeggios or or scales and you got to play uh the different degrees off of you know so if it's c major think about oh i, I was going to say um, so, you know, the third degree is the Phrygian mode, the fifth degree is the Mixolydian, seventh degree is the Locrian. Those are not really important, but you need to know at least um, 
the the qualities from the standpoint you got minor you got major and then you got uh have diminished in terms of the third degree the fifth degree and the seventh degree so that's the first degree but if you go to the third that's that's half diminished too that's that's um that's the phrygian so you got a minor so minor seven if you play the arpeggio if you go to the seven degree that's a that's a half diminished too so you got so that sound is on the third and seventh degree so I played the scale on those different degrees and then I came back and played from the first degree so right there I did an enclosure on the fifth to to play a linear line on the fifth degree And that's chromaticism from the one up to the three. Back down to the one. So what I did there, two, five, one, but I did a tritone substitution. So here's your two, five, one over a C, but then you can also do, oh, wait a, minute, wait a minute, so, yeah, that's right, so, yeah, that's a tritone substitution, that's just an augmented fourth away, so if I look at B minus seven to to E7 to uh, A major on here on the alto or piano. It'll be D minus seven to G7, then A flat minus seven to D flat seven, and then resolving it on the C. So that's a little advanced, but yeah, it's 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 like so many things that you can do based on the scales and the arpeggios. Um, Especially once you got them down, start put them, putting them in the different uh, degrees, the modes. All right. All right. So thanks, Mr. Fowler. Appreciate the simple answer. Uh, clear. My wife is learning piano and we practice together. So I am grateful I am hearing the chord color. Awesome. That's awesome. You and your wife working together, practicing together. That's cool. My wife don't want to practice no more. She don't want to play. She used to play flute. Now she's, you know, <laughs> she's a mother. <laughs> yeah, she got some time off. But yeah, she wouldn't practice with me. No problem. Uh, heard some of your smooth jazz stuff in the academy. Have any ideas? on arpeggiating a major or minor pentatonic scale. Sounds like that's what you were doing. A minor, pen, oh, so arpeggiating a pentatonic scale. What you mean? Because a pentatonic scale is a pentatonic scale, but if you're going to play an arpeggio, you can't really arpeggiate a pentatonic scale. Um, let me see. Unless you mean play through the modes of the pentatonic scale. So you can say. So you can do that. Because, you you know, if you play in arpeggios, they're just arpeggios. You don't have pentatonic arpeggios. Yeah. All right. So, um, hey, what's up, Q? 
No. <laughs> Snippet. This Car Carmella asks me all the time about Kirk Whalem. All right, let's see. Drinking some cheap wine and watching you play some notes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, Frederico, what's going on? Hold on a second. Um, Dayan, what about keeping the chord tones on the strong beat on a linear line? Um, keeping keeping the chord tones on the strong beat. That's really good. I mean, oh yeah. So check it out. You can do one, three, five, seven. So so if you think about something like that. No, I played the sharp 11. So, that's what I was looking for. So, if you look at a line like that. On every beat, I'm playing um, uh, 16 notes. So, coming down. That's, that's seven, three, I'm seven, five, three, one. So, in between, I'm doing chromaticism from seven to five. Oh, sorry. And then chromaticism. But then I'm doing like a a uh, enclosure. Going below and going back up to hit the third. And then um, from three to one is chromatic, just like seven to five. So. Usually you can go chromatic from uh, seven to five or five up to seven. You can go chromatic from um, three to one or one up to three. You know, like that. So you can say. <laughs> I did it from uh, five up to seven. So that's right. I, I, I did that right. You know, so you you can uh, definitely mess around um with these different shapes um and and just try to put on the strong beats you know, a chord tone, one, three, five, seven. So you can build a line um, and use chromaticism, use an enclosure in between or use an arpeggio in between. Just remember, you got four, you got four notes, four note choices before you got to land on a chord tone. <laughs> so instead of going chromaticism, I could go arpeggio. That's wider, so I cover more, more ground. So, so that would put me back. The closest thing to land on would be the seven. So I say right there so when you do the arpeggio, right? Or so you can do an, a, a linear line. Um, I call that a linear line. So one, two, three, five. Or you can just go, you can go up without putting a third at the end. You know, you can do that too. But that's basic. Or, you know, you can change it. So right there, I went from uh, one, no, uh, seven to five. 
All right. Right there, I did an enclosure that landed me on the sixth degree. Right there, I can say. So that's another one. So I, what I did there is do a linear line up from the seventh degree. And right here, I'm landing on the five. But then I'm going to do an enclosure. And then I'm going to land on one. You see that? I'm still dealing with C major. Keeping it on one card so that you can understand. All right. So you can keep going. One Iana, two Iana, three. So one, two, three, four, one Iana, two Iana, three. Now, at that point, what did I do? I did a linear line. And then I said an enclosure. All right. And then. Now I can do chromaticism. All right, let's yeah, let's go all the way up to the third. So that's three three things. The first one that's a, that's that's a linear, and then that's an enclosure. That's um, chromaticism. So if you want, you can come back down. You know, one e and a two and a three and a four e and a one. Um. I'm trying to play that line that I just learned. That's that's a lot of stuff. It feels awkward because it's on sax. But anyway, I hope that answered your question there. Uh, yeah, Devin. All right, uh, Dylan. What's going on, Kwaman? Your plan is so beautiful. Man, appreciate you. Uh, and melodic. All right, keep playing and keep um, making educations videos. Yes, sir. Appreciate the love. And give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, give me thumbs up thank you for chatting and make sure you check out some of the things that i have for you that i use to monetize things um textquaman.com and text loops if you want to get that loop package i made a loop package um that uh consists of loops that i've created with the ewe um 10 different ones and i have also play alongs of my own that you can use with sheet music and um, uh, also included a transcription with the sheet music and MP3. So that's the Q, um, Q grooves bundle. That's what that is. So yeah, just text me at uh, text hashtag loops and you'll get the link to go to that page. Um, but that's how you can support too. If you appreciate uh, what I'm doing here, you know, cause a lot of gigs are gone. So, you know, any love that you have <laughs> for what I do, you know, just support and buy some. Even I got a single. I got a single hashtag single. So you can text that and you'll get a link to get the, the latest single. But actually, all the singles that I've released um, within the last couple of years are all in the bundle. So you can get all of that stuff in one bundle. Plus, you can, you know, have the play along so you can play over these, too. So just needed to do that commercial break. But thank you all so much for for watching and stuff. Um, Yeah. So, uh, OK. So Devin said that's exactly what he was wondering about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whatever you learn, like I'm playing these lines, I'm making up stuff. I'm not transcribing, but uh, I'm learning something because I'm teaching myself. So right there, if I take that line and apply it uh, through the steps, I would take it and start um, putting it in different keys. But let me get this first key right. Uh. 
So let's take that and put it in a different key. Oh man. Uh, I gotta jump. So I need to get there. Uh, <laughs> Man, I got to work on that one. That line right there is getting me. So let me analyze it. Use my own principles to apply to transposing this stuff. So what I'll do first, I know it's going to be on the fifth, but I got to think about this line. So that line itself is like, if I'm thinking about that shape in particular, I got a half step up, a minor third, and another half step. I mean, another minor third. That's just a diminished um, arpeggio. Uh, with the half step below the first note. Then go down a whole step. So. Okay, now I got it. See, so right there, just thinking about the shape and what the interval is or the theory behind it, it helped me to play the right thing even uh in 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 the midst of not hearing it because i didn't really hear it you know in this new key but now i got it because i know the shape because i go to the fifth and play a half step and then at that point half step up and then at that point i just play a diminished arpeggio <laughs> really cool uh, that's another uh, enclosure okay gotta get my uh, ring finger in there Instead of doing ah, I'm trying to play something, but my fingers are landing different anyway. But yeah, I got to work on that one. So that's another lick. I might do another in the shed session on where I'll just go through and uh, play that lick uh, through the different keys. So I got two down. <laughs> And so I, I got to uh, add 10, 10 more. All right. All right. Anybody have any uh, questions? Any other questions? Let's see. 
dog, it's, it's, it's eight o'clock already. And look at me trying to do other stuff. I ask, I, you know, I get busy answering you all's questions and the time is gone. All right, man, I'm so sorry for all this sniffing and wiping and stuff like that. Usually I'm cool, but we went for a walk today and uh, they've been cutting grass over here in the area. So it's kind of got my allergies messing up, but it's good. I'm all good. I'll drink some water and uh, clear myself out. Uh, I'm looking, any questions, any questions, uh, was this helpful? Make sure you send me a text message, textquaman.com. We got people on here. I see we got a, a bunch of people on here. So, um, shoot me a message here. I still got the chat up. So it's eight o'clock. If not, that'll be it, um, for this session. <laughs> Uh, I can't play that. It'll mess up my my stream. I'll have to pay for uh, <laughs> playing the tune. I like playing it on alto. Uh, let me see, because I kind of kind of space. No, it's not right. Steps is really hip to play on alto.
It's it's really like refreshing to play it on alto. It's really cool. All right, all right, y'all. Uh, somebody definitely a bebop feel to how you approach uh line creation. Yeah, definitely. I love it. I I enjoy bebop. What is the importance? of tension and resolution in your improvisation. Uh, what is the importance? Yeah, um, I like it because it makes your uh, playing solo and more engaging. Um, so it just depends on how you feel and, and what song, what's the song and the emotion you want to um, evoke. And so, the more tension you can add or set people up where you're giving them uh, something to chew on or to digest. And then you add some things that would alter the, the chords uh, to where you're adding some tension. Um, then you can resolve it, you know, but it's all about you being familiar with the chords, of course, and also familiar with, other options that you can do that you can use to make your uh, solo, excuse me, your solo and more interesting. Yeah. There are um, moments when I need Kenny Garrett, when I hear Kenny Garrett. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He's definitely, you know, phenomenal example of uh, using those tension and release and playing out. Do you hear any, do you have any tips on how to get a brighter tone? Really, that's all about, I would think, gear, like mouthpiece. You know, you can do like a Claude Lakey. <laughs> that's pretty bright. Their their stuff is bright. Or get a, uh, um, a metal mouthpiece. You know, that'll get you a, a more edgy, edgy tone. But it's, yeah, it's, it's more so the mouthpiece thing. How to practice and articulation. I got a video on that. Look for a video I did on the channel, a YouTube channel, uh, Jazz Webshed, Jazz Webshed channel, where where I talk about how to practice articulation. I got a couple of them on there, a real old one, and then I have a up to, a more up to date. Um, so check that out. But long story short, <laughs> or to say it quickly, um. You got to ha uh, have a line and then practice phrase like piece by piece how you would like to articulate it. And then you can make the line pop, you know, like something like that. You done a Lee, you know, phrase by phrase. That's not the right key. I don't know it. Let me see. Uh, let me think. A flat. So, yeah, you got to practice something like that. My articulation is together um, just because I'm used to the, the phrases. It's certain phrases that the articulation fits well. Boodle da 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 doodle da 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 doodle tonguing. I got another video on doodle tonguing. Oh, 
you know, so you just got to work on certain phrases and certain ideas and then start trying to piece your lines together to where you can fit the whole thing together. But I listened to a lot of Johnny Griffin earlier on and a lot of uh, Cannibal Adderley. And uh, I mimic their stuff. Uh, Sonny Stead, of course, but Sonny Rollins, too. Um, and I, I just learned how they uh, were connecting their lines and uh, putting that articulation in there, the tonguing and stuff like that. And so that really helped me to be able to uh, uh, get my articulation together. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to play something smooth, something smooth like a gospel tune. Um if I play a tune though, it's gonna it's gotta be something that's old so it won't pick up on the ID, the uh content ID. Is great as our faithfulness real old? Is it old enough? <laughs> So my whole style changed, right? Playing gospel and and voicing a melody like Great Is Thy Faithfulness, the whole um, the whole motive uh, changed and the whole style. I could put way more vibrato. I could be more open with my vibrato and being lyrical and making uh, every line really sing. So that's totally different, you know, from... You know, playing like that to go into. You know, I'm playing real lyrical and I'm adding a lot of gliss and I'm, I'm thinking about my crescendoing and decrescendoing and uh ornamentation and stuff like that but i like i love playing you know i love playing gospel i love playing um groove you know stuff i love playing bebop you know all of those elements you know i like i like to pull from those different worlds because every genre has its own uh, philosophy and uh motive and intention you know what i'm saying so when you want to explore more things intellectually, you can do that with, with a, uh, a platform or a canvas, <laughs> you know, in jazz. And then even in jazz, you got different types of songs where you got modal songs, where it's more pedal oriented, where you got a drone. Let me do it on. You know, I can go anywhere when you got a drone, a drone, when you got a, um, is that right? 
That's what they call it, right? Dum dum pedal point. Let's say pedal point. But yeah, you can just really take it anywhere. Um, you know, but if you're playing a, a gospel tune, you got to be more vocal and you got to be more lyrical. And it's it's all about um singing, you know, sounding like a singer. All right, I gave y'all a lot. What do you think of Jackie McLean? I like him. I, yeah, I like his stuff. What solos would you recommend for better vocabulary? Oh, check out, I know, check out uh, I, um, Oscar. Check out Sonny Stitt. Sonny Stitt stuff. Sonny Stitt, definitely. You can't go wrong. Hey, bro, Daryl, what up, my man? That's the gospel saxophone. It's smooth jazz. What you call it? What's your tag? Smooth jazz. Check out my man, Daryl Merrill. He's on here checking stuff out. Any idea what is uh, parapentatonic? I don't know. I don't know what parapentatonic is. <laughs> Huh, putting them together. I don't know what parapentatonic is. I don't know. I'm just messing around. What would you recommend um, to the melodic player? What would you recommend to the melodic player? To be a more melodic player, I guess. All right. To be a more melodic player. Man, I don't know. You got to give me like a point of reference to add to what we play to mix it up more. So for you, Daryl, I hear you because I know you and I've heard your plan. I let I love what you share, bro. Thanks. Uh to do much. Oh, so much. Okay, sometimes people put typos, but I got you. Appreciate you so much, Corey. And once again, I do have stuff that I uh use to help monetize things while there's no gig so if you want to support definitely check out the latest thing is the q grooves bundle and it's got um play alongs that i created uh from my albums popular songs from my albums also i have uh, my loops some loops that i created that you can use in your own productions um that i created with the ewe it's 10 of those 10 uh play alongs and also one transcription with the mp3 and sheet music for it that's all together in the crew q grooves bundle volume one so just uh text quaman.com just text hashtag loops and you'll get that link yeah just text hashtag loops so uh daryl you said um you said uh to mix it up more more melodic I think still your thing, man, is is transcribing. It goes back to what I said before. Um, and thank y'all for texting. Somebody sent in a text, I think. But um, it goes back to transcribing. Learn some Cannonball Adderley. Check out Cannonball Adderley stuff. Um, check out, uh, I told someone earlier to check out uh, Sonny Stitt. Yeah, really that's what I'm saying. You, I mean, you already know how to be melodic in gospel. Um, talking to Daryl, so and and smooth jazz. I think you just got to dig more into transcribing and learning bebop lines and learning uh, other stuff, like even ballads from uh, people like Cannonball Adderley, because you play alto, you play tenor too. But if you learn more of the stuff that you want to sound like it'll gradually come out in your plan you know no problem Corey. 
because that's that's what you do. Because everything that I'm playing, I got, I got from somewhere. <laughs> it, it, it like it, the the concept of it, you know. And don't don't I, I think a lot of times people are so trying to be uh, individual or trying to be um, have their own voice to where you know sometimes they don't listen to others. Or they don't learn other people's stuff because they say they want to have their own style. You're going to have your own style anyway. Like my own style is sitting on the shoulders of people like David Fathead Newman, you know, uh, Johnny Griffin, Joshua Redman, Sonny Rollins, Stanley Turrentine, you know, and I really studied these musicians. I listened to a lot of their music, learned a lot of their stuff. And um, it rubbed off on me. Now, I sound like myself, but you can hear elements of these players in my playing. You know, somebody said Kenny Garrett. I listened to a lot of Kenny Garrett for a while. You know, I didn't play tenor. I mean, I, mean, I didn't play alto back then. But when I get on alto, you can hear definitely hear that because when I get on alto, I kind of hear that. But I don't play like Kenny Garrett. I would say, you know. I don't know what I sound like on alto, who I sound like. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I sound like myself. But, um, but yeah, the more you learn, the, just I think if you just get out of your own head and your own stuff, your own language, and you just kind of explore other people's language, then that's where you'll start crafting this stuff your lines and your your stuff better because i hear you you know when you play over stuff i can hear you trying to do the bebop or trying to play other other things but it's it's like uh you know it's like babies a baby trying to speak you know they're trying and you can hear what they're doing but it's not quite there yet but it's okay because you're reaching you, you're stretching like i can hear your articulation I can hear, you know, you're trying to stretch out, but like harmonically, you need to be more uh, in depth or have a bit more knowledge of um, the modes. Like, I don't know if you was on here earlier, but earlier I was talking about how you can play uh, scales and arpeggios through the different degrees, you know, so you can take um, each degree. So if it's, if it's a C major, you can play over it like it's E minor or half diminished. You can play over it like it's it's G seven. You can play over it like it's a uh, a B uh, locrian or half diminished. And and don't let the terms uh, intimidate you. You just got to get the feel of it in terms of how it feels under your fingers because you can play some of the same things that you know. Um, but play it on a different degree. Don't just think when you have a C minor vamp, you just think in C minor pentatonic. No, don't think that. Think E flat major, you know, or think uh, G minor, you know. So purposely put yourself on a different degree and start playing over it from that point. You can always default to whatever you hear and then whatever you feel naturally, but if you want to stretch out, you can you can first think about the different um, degrees of that chord, uh, and in terms of being melodic, um, you know it just depends on the type of style you're playing. I think you could easily do it on a format that you're used to, like a groove format or something that's smooth or gospel style. Uh, but once you start getting into jazz then you know it's a different palette it's a different canvas that you um really got to understand the theory of it but once again the more you dive into learning it the more it can even enhance your um your primary genre so let's see uh Mm-hmm. 
You know, I can really stretch it out. My bebop. That's that, um, that's that smooth lick or the gospel lick. You got to learn how to put that, those, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> put, put, put that on those notes. What do you call it? Bending those notes, right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, bro. Those extras. <laughs> yeah, out of the box. That's right. Yeah, but you got to have the knowledge. You got to have, and not just the knowledge, you got to um, have it under your fingers, right? Uh, what's another one? That's, our, that's the um, pentatonic. So, yeah, it just depends because usually you imitate a singer on something like that. Uh, what, what are we going to do? Uh, something else that's my boy <laughs> yes sir but yeah he got it he got both he got the bebop and he got the smooth big old sound sound big as he is <laughs> no nah, his sound is bigger than he is but that's my boy all right y'all I think I've had some fun. Y'all have had some fun. Did you have some fun? 
Give it a like. Give me a thumbs up. Let everybody know that this channel is out there. Um, leave me what? Y'all already subscribed, right? You already subscribed. So tell other people about it. And uh, definitely uh, get some of this stuff that I offer for you. Remember the Q Grooves bundle is the latest thing that I've been promoted, promoting. And uh, you can definitely snatch it up. Um, the link is actually uh, just text me, textquaman.com, T-E-X-T-Q-U-A-M-O-N. I put it in the description there. So you should be able to click it. If you're on YouTube, you can click it. Uh, the number 817-242-2732. 817-242-2732. Text hashtag loops or hashtag t-shirt if you want to end the shared t-shirt. Any of those things to support the channel. We all trying to make it out here. <laughs> I just like to create stuff to sell instead of just asking for donation. I know a lot of cats been trying to do the live stream thing and get, um, you know, and getting folk to give from them playing Facebook live when their sound ain't even all of that. <laughs> I think it'd be better if you create some products or put something together, bundle together to offer people. That way they, you'll give them something, some good valuable stuff, you know, that's a better way to, uh, you know, to make some money during this Pandora, Pandora, during this uh, uh, pandemic. That's what they call it. All right, y'all. Well, I appreciate you. Appreciate the love, support, all the questions and everything. This is what I do on Monday nights for my members of the Texas Tenor Music Academy. And every now and then I'll go live and, uh, uh, share with you all out there who aren't members cool we got some people that's been hitting me up for the loops um uh, that's what i want to do yeah bro you said oh okay oh no i, I look at oh what up oscar yeah what i see yeah you've been checking it out but um all right appreciate y'all be safe and get the shed and work it out and hit me up anytime. You know, I love to help however I can um, from the standpoint of improving yourself on your instrument and, um, you know, giving you good content and stuff, inspiring you so you can go out and do the same things. Create your own music and, um, you know, create a YouTube channel and uh, share some of the stuff that you learn on here. All right. All right, good people. Much love to y'all out there, and we will see you another another time on another one. All right, peace.